Power training is a very common term or principle that you'll hear in the weight room for athletic development. For example, all right, we're going to go in and we're going to hit some hex bar jumps, some jump squats. We're going to do loaded vertical jumps with dumbbells in our hands to uh, be more powerful, air air quotes. (laughs) And yes, you will be more powerful at those specific tasks. And by virtue of what you're doing, you're probably going to be recruiting more muscle fibers. Uh, Your nervous system will be challenged to really do that amount of work in a short time frame. And to that extent, it is a good thing. And for many novice to even intermediate level athletes, just teaching the body to generally, and it is a general thing uh, with the added weights, be more powerful, can definitely be something that is a positive. We do need to be careful, though, in getting too carried away with power as just this general principle, meaning athletes who are a little bit more advanced, they have the principles of movement down for their their movement in their sport, and they have a pretty good nervous system. If we get too carried away with, all right, we're gonna really take it to the house on these these jump squats and these hex bar jumps, and and even to an extent Olympic lifts, depending on how you do them uh, somewhat, uh, we can actually create this paradigm of being too weight room powerful. And what I mean by that is simply uh, that we can be biased to putting force down into the ground for too long. Most movements in sport happen in a very short time frame. Take acceleration, for example. If I'm just accelerating from a a block start or a two-point start, that first foot contact is around two-tenths of a second. Each contact after that will be uh, faster and faster and faster until you get to upright running and we're around one-tenth of a second, even less in elite sprinters. A standing vertical jump is around a half second, give or take. Uh, Good, fast, explosive athletes can do it quicker. But when we add weight on these things, the ground contact time rises. And we always must be mindful that in sport, it is our body weight. We are not taking added weights with us for the most part, uh, if you're in the average sport that is not a strength sport. So we uh, also need to look at how the body responds to added load uh, for the sake of power. If I'm doing anything bilateral, that will be a more internal rotation biased movement or a bilateral weight um, actually loaded movement, like a squat, a deadlift, uh, most hex bar deadlifts. We can manipulate body position. But generally speaking, that's something that biases compression. It biases internal rotation, which is a good thing, by the way. But if we become too biased towards that, we will tend to spend too much time going down into the ground, internally rotating down into the ground. Our heels may stay glued to the ground a little bit too long, and we may start to adapt a little bit different movement signature if that is our our thing over time. The core of movement is really deflecting oneself off the ground appropriately, and that actually requires a little bit more of an external rotation bias, and we do still need to internally rotate. Internal rotation and pronation helps bias time. It gives us movement options, but to be really bouncy, truly have bounce, And to be quick off the ground, we also need to appropriately set ourselves up for that through external rotation. And so it's just important to be mindful of how we assign things in the weight room. And so from a very general perspective, uh, I kind of polarize it. So on one end, we have the lifting. And within the lifting, I tend to make sure that is relatively neutral, meaning I often will assign athletes uh, slant boards for their squats. I will tend to have the weight placement more in the front so that the lift is a little bit less compressive by nature and it allows them expansion on the way down and compression on the way up, that there's always this harmony of movements. We can see the same thing in sprinting. We have pronation in the air and we have more of a supination bias on the ground. So within each lift, uh, even a slow lift, it's not really a big deal if it's just a lift for a general perspective and we're not necessarily trying to put force down into the ground. We want to be balanced. And then on the other end, we're doing our sprints and and our jumps, and we're mindful of uh, contact times that are appropriate to sport, many of which are around two-tenths of a second or less, as well as a lot of sprint derivatives and variations. And then in that middle zone, we just need to be, uh, as I see it, be aware and mindful of impulse times. So things that are more oscillatory, that have these little mini and reactive bounces in them that are more reflective of what happens in sport. And this especially being true uh, once we move in the intermediate to more advanced levels. On the novice level uh, to even intermediate, pretty much anything is going to work. I can do a ton of general power training in the weight room, jump squats, hex bar jumps, 
those kind of things. And I will see good results just by virtue of being generally more coordinated, more powerful, my nervous system becoming more efficient. The more advanced I get, the more mindful I must be of the nuances of sport itself. So in that sense, we need to just give these grounds or create a platform to um, internally and externally rotate to maintain that balance between those two states of pronation and supination. And when we do do power work in the gym, we must be mindful of impulse times. And again, that's where I look at even quick impulses in the Olympic lifts, which sometimes involve uh, a quick impulse into a full catch drop or uh, not cons- being so concerned with total weight in a hang clean, but more how fast can you lift it and how quick is that little quick rebend of the knees. So as we move into that advanced level, we must become uh, more mindful of the biomechanics and we can't live in that middle ground. We can't live in that, um, I wouldn't call it a gray zone because everything shades of gray, but we really have to put our mindset to how the human body moves in sport and use that to guide our training. So I hope you found this um, perspective helpful in how you go about your power training and the perspective that you bring to your power training. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them in the box below.